brothers and sisters, one more time, I welcome you to this platform, the Surefire Live Conference platform. This platform that the Almighty God has given us to share his word. Today, we continue with our theme, our topic, the love of God. We have been dealing with this topic uh, throughout this month, and we will continue to deal with it uh, uh, for some time because it is rich and it is indeed deep. Praise the name of the Lord. Our text is taken from Romans chapter 5, verse 5. Romans chapter 5, verse 5. Now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. I believe every one of us who has been connecting upon this platform by now can say this by heart. Let me start by stating or reminding us again of the objective of this teaching. The objective of this teaching is to provoke us to love to provoke us back to love. The Spirit of God led us and gave us that model, B-R-R-B-L. Believe, repent, receive the Holy Spirit. Become a child of God, a son of God, a daughter of God, and live by faith and love. We are at that point point of exploring deeper the love of God. Praise the name of the Lord. So this message is meant to provoke you, provoke me back to love, the love of God. Not just any love that we think of or assume as the world does, but to live according to the love of God. It is about living in the love of God. God who created us is love. And he has created humankind to live in love. But today, selfishness and the resultant conflicts are the order of the day. We are all witnesses to this fact. And so God wants all of us, all his children whom he has created, to return to his love. The love of God. That's why we're taking this topic. So today we're going straight into the characteristics of love. That will be our focus. The characteristics of love. Praise the name of the Lord. From the text we have read. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. We have made clear definition of love. And I've also stated that love, the love of God is only possible through the Holy Spirit. The love of God is only possible through the Holy Spirit. That is why human beings in their natural state, natural form, pursue selfishness. And from selfishness, we have all manner of conflicts in the world today. Even in the best endeavor, selfishness still uh, reigns and creates conflict. So it becomes difficult, even in the best endeavor for human beings to deal and express the true love of God without selfishness and self-gain. So Jesus Christ is the epitome of love is the explicit uh, demonstration of God's love to humankind. He lived and showed the love of God, showed compassion to the needy, to those who were sick he healed, and he laid down his life for you and I to be saved. And through him we have received the Holy Spirit and we do have the capacity to love as God loves, if we have the Holy Spirit. And so for you to express, live, experience, demonstrate the true love of God, you must come to Jesus Christ, who himself is the love of God. The one who died for you, who died for me. And thereby, receive the Holy Spirit, 
who pours out the love of God in our hearts and we are able to live by that love. So definition of love, again, we restate that love is the state of being or of mind or disposition to do only good to another person and no harm and no consideration of gain. This is only possible by the indwelling spirit of God that is in us. It implies first that our total submission must be to God and we must be in obedience and adoration of God and then express God in us to others through love. So when we are talking about the characteristics of love then, the Bible makes it clear in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, reading from verse 5. What is not love and what is love? So when you want to understand something deeper, you look at the characteristics of it. It's good to have the definition as we have had. And so for deeper understanding, you look at the characteristics. For example, uh, in biology, you will hear the characteristics of living things. And one of the characteristics of living things is that they move, isn't it? Living things can move, but not only that, then there are other things. They respond to stimulus, irritability, if you still remember. And we used to have a quote then, different quotes, Mr. Ninja. <laughs> Movement, are there, reproduction, there are all a number of them. Okay, and that helps us to understand. For example, if you see a, a lock of wood, a piece of wood lying down, and maybe things are not so clear, that there is no light, and you suspect that that lock of wood might be snake, what do you do? Sometimes you pick stone or sand or something, you throw at it. If it starts moving, you know definitely that cannot be lock of wood, because wood is non-living thing and does not have the characteristic of movement. If it moves, then you can suspect it is something. So we need to look at the characteristics of love. Another way of also looking at things to have deeper understanding is by you looking at what it is not. So in looking at the characteristics of love, let's look at a few nuggets, few points of what love is not. It is important we look at this because there are so many assumptions that we live with and sometimes create problems for ourselves that this is love. As we know, characteristics refers to a feature or quality belonging uh, typically to a person, place, or thing and serving to identify them. So if we can look at the characteristics of things, then we can identify. So when we look at the characteristics of love from the point of what is not love and the point of what is love, then we will be able to identify some of the things that plays out in our own lives and around us, which sometimes we assume is love, but it is not love. So let's look quickly at some key headings of what is not love. Number one is the opposite of love. So if I ask us, what is the opposite of love? Every one of us will go, hate. So the opposite of love is hate. So love is not hate. There is no way anyone who hates another person, no matter who, the person is, can say he has the love of God. First John chapter 2, verse 9 to 11 talks about that. It says, if we hate. Okay, let's look at it quickly. Quickly, quickly. First John chapter 2. 
Verse 9, he who says he is in the light and hates his brother is in darkness until now. He who loves his brother abides in the light and there is no cause for stumbling in him. 11, but he who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. So hate cannot be loved. Number two, love is not selfishness. Love is not selfishness. Philippians chapter 2, verse 3. Philippians chapter 2, verse 3 says, do nothing out of selfish ambition. Do nothing out of selfish ambition. So, you, who says you want to dominate the whole world so they will know that a man came to this world? You, who says your tribe must dominate others so they must know that your tribe is the superior? You, who says your religion must dominate others because so they must know that your religion is the superior one. Hear this. Do nothing. Do absolutely what? Nothing. Out of selfish ambition. But of course, this is antithetic to the natural human beings. It is complete opposite of the natural human beings. For those of us who are familiar with Maslow, um, theory of motivation, Maslow's theory of motivation, Maslow observed that the natural human kind are motivated by their personal, selfish needs. That's their motivation. We will look at that a bit. This, so it's good to be ambitious. No, no problem being ambitious. But what is that right balance of your ambition? Does your ambition seek to glorify God and to bring greater glory and a greater blessing to humankind? That is why we have to understand the love of God. Number three, love is not emotion. Love is not emotion. It is not feeling. Rather, a conscious decision to love. You have to choose to love. Ah, I'm the, I know this one will touch many people. Love is not emotion. Love is not emotion. It is not feeling. Rather, a conscious decision to love. You have to choose to love. For example, when somebody has done something evil to you, somebody has become an enemy to you, I can tell you that it is difficult for you not to want to hate that person. It will take the spirit of God for you because you will feel justified. After all, the person did evil to you. Wow. But if you have love, the love of God, the way God has forgiven us, you will forgive that person. So, I want us to look a little at this. Yes, love does have emotion, but not all emotions or all emotion is love. Love has emotion, but not all emotion is love. For example, you remember in John chapter 11, verse 35, Jesus wept. He wept. And the people said, oh, see how much he loved him. That was about Lazarus, whom Jesus loved. 
when he was at the grave of Lazarus. He wept. His weeping was a show of compassion. Compassion for Lazarus whom he wants to raise up and also compassion for the people because of their unbelief. And that's why Jesus cried out. He said, Father, I thank you because you always hear me. I do this that these ones may know that you have sent me, that they may believe. And he cried out, Lazarus, come forth! And the power of God, by him who is the word of God, through whom all things were created, the one that every knee must bow to, the one that everything hears his name and obeys, Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the one who was dead heard his voice because everyone must and will hear his voice and obeyed and came out from the grave. Glory be to God. That is a message for another day. I want us to look slightly deeper, a bit deeper in this last one. Love is not emotion. I want us to look at the example of a man who demonstrated feeling, love of feeling. Uh, that is in Judges chapter 14. I believe you can already guess him. Samson, Samson. Now Samson went down to Timnah and saw a woman. I'm reading from verse 1. Judges chapter 14. And saw a woman in Timnah of the daughters of the Philistines. So he went up and told his father and mother, saying, I have seen a woman in Timnah of the daughters of the Philistines. Now therefore get her for me as a wife. The parent tried to persuade him not to. Hear what is said in verse, the last, he said, get her for me, for she pleases me well. For she pleases me well. But look at what happened afterwards. You know, when he went to get this wife, he had on the way, he encountered a lion, killed a lion, and Samson formed a riddle, which he now told the uh, people of the woman he wanted to marry. So from verse 14. So he said to them, out of the eater came something to eat, and out of the strong came something sweet. Now for three days, they could not explain the riddle. Verse 15. But it came to pass on the seventh day that they said to Samson's wife, entice your husband that he may explain the riddle to us or else we will burn you and your father's house with fire. Have you invited us in order to take what is ours? Is that not so? 16, then Samson's wife wept on him and said, you only hate me. You do not love me. Is that not what the world does? Look at that. Emotion. They take emotion for love. Oh, young ladies, when those boys deceive you and lie to you, you say, oh, he loves me. He say, I cannot stay without every time I'm dreaming of you. Emotion is not love. Yes, love does have emotion, but not all emotions are love. So here, Samson's wife wept on him and said, you only hate me, you do not love me. You have posed a riddle to the sons of my people, but you have not explained it to me. And he said to her, look, I have not explained it to my father or my mother. So should I explain it to you? 17, now. She had wept on him the seventh day. For seven days, the woman continued to weep emotion. Seven days, telling him, you hate me. That's why you're not explaining to me. If you love me, ah, you will explain this riddle to me. Seven days while their feast lasted. And it happened on the seventh day that he told her, because she pressed him so much, then she explained the riddle to the sons of her people. 
So the men of the city said to him on the seventh day, as they said to Samson, now we know your riddle. On the seventh day before the sun went down, what is sweeter than honey? And what is stronger than a lion? And Samson answered them, and he said to them, if you had not plowed with my heifer, you would not have solved my riddle. Was that love? Love does no harm. Now, see why we should not live in fear, but love. They threatened this woman and told her, we are going to burn you and your father and your father's house with fire because of this act that she did that harmed Samson. She actually got burned with her father's house, with her parents. Every one of them got burned. And you see that in the following uh, chapter, chapter 15. Let's look at from verse 5, from verse 5. When he came, set the torches on fire, he let the foxes go into the standing grain of the Philistines and burned. So the whole play, place was burned. Then the Philistines said, who has done this? That's verse 6. And he answered, Samson, the son-in-law of the Timnite, because he has taken his wife and given her to his companion. So the Philistine came up and burned her and her father with fire. Did you see that? In verse 6, the Philistines came and burned her and her father with fire. The same thing, she used emotion and fear to do to harm Samson happened because they threatened her that they will burn her and her father's house. They still burn her. So love is not emotion. Be able, be wise. Let the love of God guide you. So how do you then know the love of God? By the characteristics of what love is. What love is. Praise the name of the Lord. So let's quickly then look at what love is. Let us read first. First Corinthians chapter 13. From verse 4 to 8a, love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Is not puffed up. Love does not behave rudely, does not seek its own. Is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Fears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Verse 8a, love never fails. Love never fails. I've tried to put this in 13 big headings of what I call the characteristics of love. And so let's look at it together. Number one, I say we must understand, first of all, that love is a command from God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Love is a command from God. Jesus Christ said in John chapter 13, verses 34 and 35, he gave the command there. He says, a new commandment I give to you. A new commandment I give to you that you love one another as I have loved you that you also love one another, a new commandment. So love is a command from God. Number two, love is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Love is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Romans chapter five, verse five. We have seen there the spirit pour out the love of God in our heart. Galatians chapter five, verse 22. The fruit of the spirit is love. So you need the Holy Spirit to be able to manifest the love of God, the true love. Number three, love is kind. Love is kind. So we see that. Number four, love is caring. Love is caring. If you combine these two, kindness and caring, then you will say love is compassionate. Love is compassionate. So love is kind and caring. Number five, love is patient. Number six, love is humble. So love is not proud. 
All this you would see in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 from verse 4 to 8a. Number seven, love seeks the good of another person. Love does not live for himself or herself. Love is not selfish, as we saw before. Love seeks the good of another person and does only good to another person. Love seeks the good of another person and does only good to another person, does no harm. So any action that you take, any action that I take, any action that anybody takes that does harm to another person does not qualify as law. Characteristics of law. We will subject this to some tests in our own life. Number eight, love works in righteousness and truth. Love works in righteousness and truth. Number nine, love is endurance. Love endures. Love endures all things. Love endures all things. Number 10, love is obedience. Love is obedience. Love is obedient or obedient. Because love is a command from God that you must love. I must love. We must love. Love requires obedience. Love is obedience. Number 11, love believes God. Love believes all things. That belief there is to believe God. Number 12, love is sacrificial giving. Love is sacrificial giving. That is the giving that is love. You know, sometimes people will give you something to enslave you. They will give you something to lure you. But the, the gift that comes from love is sacrificial. Like the, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And Jesus so loved us that he gave himself to die for us. Number 13, love is power and does not fail. And you must know this one. Love is power and does not fail. Why you must know this? And that is um, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8a. Love does not fail. It's because when you are active, you practice love actively, there will be a response of love. The response of love, it, it will shock you and surprise you, but you know it, in, are in two folds. It is... One side is hate. The response that you get for love, you better learn it, is that you are going to be hated. <laughs> and then the second side is you are going to get love. Hello, we will come back to dealing with this as we move uh, into it next week. Now I'm beginning to look at the practical living in love. So love can be active or passive. It is only the active love that invokes the response and the power of love. Love can be active or passive. You know, somebody that you just say, even the Bible teaches it, we'll get to that, we'll look at it. Yeah, somebody that... You have tried all you can to resolve issues with, and the person doesn't want to resolve it. The Bible tells us that we can allow the person be, but inside you, you mustn't hate that person. So that will be passive. You don't really re and demonstrate anything actively to the person. So love can be passive. But it is only active love that invokes the response and the power of love. And the response that you get for loving truly as God wants us to love, to tell you unequivocally is hate and love. You will get love back for loving and you will also get hate for loving. But because love is power and love does not fail, 
that hatred will do you nothing. I know you're already beginning to say, ah, no, some things happen to some people who love. I know, we'll come to that. And you will see why you must know the power that you have in love. Praise the name of the Lord. So to round off, let's quickly look at the selfishness that motivates humankind versus the love of God. We already understand our model victory by love, which is what you're seeing. So we've been dealing with the foundation of love and then we started talking about living in love, the aspect of understanding God's love, understanding the fruits, uh, the spirit's fruit of love in you. And then we'll go into the practical. But let's look at this model. So on the left hand here, I put my own uh, understanding uh, from the scripture the hierarchy of life, the hierarchy of life. And on the left hand here is the Maslow hierarchy of needs, what motivates people. So organizations use this uh, to motivate their staff to perform to this highest level. That's the desire, is that they should perform to this highest level. You can see desire to become the most that one can be is in this level of self-actualization. Now, if you follow the hierarchy, uh, Maslow's hierarchy of motivation, human needs here, you will see the lowest level is the basic needs. It's called the basic needs, air, water, food, shelter, sleep, clothing, reproduction and then goes to safety needs, and then goes to love and belonging. But see the definition of love, friendship, intimacy, family, sense of connection. So it is self-love. Everything here is self, self-needs, self-security, self-love and belonging, self-esteem, look at that, respect, self-esteem, status, recognition, strength, freedom, nothing wrong with it, and then self-actualization. So you will see that all this is embodied in our own self, 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 what we need. Maslow's observation is true. It's right, it's the right observation. This is how a natural human is driven. And because of this selfishness, all self, 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 we run into conflict. We create conflicts. But look at the hierarchy of life. If you follow physical, so everything Maslow talks about sits in the physical and the material and even the logical. Uh, this one, call it the logical, is logical uh, realm. So science sits there, right? all that, and then you go to the spiritual. Now, many people practice the spiritual and they think because they practice the spiritual and they get results that they are actually living in love. But you remember 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse three, and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, that have not love, it profits me nothing. Look at verse two. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could move mountains that have not love, I am nothing. So, spiritual without love is not God. So it's possible to practice spirituality 
attain great things, possible to practice the logical level, a great, achieve great scientific breakthroughs. It's possible to practice materialism, amass money, pursue money, and use money to do a whole lot, including um, doing hospitality work, which is good to do without law. It's possible to sit in this physical realm, everything you do in the physical, and use that to rule, to reign, to dominate, like people who carry guns, yeah? people who, who are kidnapping people, forcing people, oppressing people. They dominate, but have no law. So love is the highest hierarchy of life. Love is a state of being, as we know, of mind or disposition to look, do only good to another person. And a few texts here. So another model presentation of that Maslow's uh, concept, and you could see here basic needs, uh, psychological needs, and self-fulfillment needs. Achieving one's full potential, including creative activities. It's all about self, self. So God, the love realm is the highest realm that we all must seek. And I've drawn this, you would see that all these other realm tie to this physical. It's the means by which we use to live here in this physical realm. But the one that takes us beyond this physical realm is love. So that's why love encircles all. So God, he, the Bible says in John, 1 John chapter 4, verse 8, he who does not love does not know God, for God is love. God is love. That's the highest level that we can get to. But thank God that we have been given the Holy Spirit. So we have the capacity to live this love of God by his spirit. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Love is perfect. That is, we are complete in God when we live in love. And this is what we will be looking at, living in love in our next teaching. I'll stop sharing at this point as we round off. Glory be to God. Glory be to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So, beloved brothers and sisters, we're going to be looking at the practical living in love, bringing all this together. We understand the characteristics of love. We understand what is not love. God is calling us to love because love is God. God is love. And you can see there are many things we have said in the world is love, which aren't love at all. But if we live in the love of God, we will have the manifestation of the power, of the glory, of the accept, acceptance of God and gain eternal life. This is where we want to stop. Let us pray. Let us all ask, Father God, give me the, the grace to live in love by your spirit. Holy Spirit of God, pour out the love of God in my heart. Thank you, Almighty God, for hearing and answering our prayers. For we have prayed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. If you want to surrender your life to Jesus, so this love of God can be your portion. 
so you can receive the Holy Spirit. Pray with me now. Pray, say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying for me. Heavenly Father, I thank you for giving me your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. And now I pray. Father God, forgive me my sins. I repent of all my sins. I forsake them. I reject them. I renounce them. And now I ask, Lord, please give me your Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit of God, help me to live in love, the love of God, the power of God, and to do the will of God all the days of my life. Thank you, Father God, for changing my life, transforming me into the glorious image of the Son of God. To you be all glory in Jesus' name. Amen. The Almighty God has heard your prayer. The Almighty God has done just as he has promised. The Almighty God bless you, brothers and sisters. We want to round it up here. Okay. Good afternoon, Pastor. Good afternoon. Please go ahead. Pastor, when you mentioned love, you said that love is not an emotion. But I was uh, a bit confused because you, you went ahead to say um, compassion. Is compassion not an emotion as well? Is compassion emotion? That's why I'm asking because I thought all of it yeah, was from the heart. Um, I'm asking if compassion is emotion. I used to think of it that way. I beg your pardon? I, I used to, to think of it. I used to think of it as so, something that still emanates from the heart. So something that emanates from the heart is emotion. Mm -hmm. Is it? Huh? Is something that emanates from the heart emotion? Is that the definition of emotion? How I understand it too. Okay, all right, let's help then. Thank you for your question. Okay. So, I did say that love has emotion, but not all emotion is love. Did you hear that? Yes. Hello, I need your confirmation. Did you pick that message? Yes, I think that's that clears it. I didn't hear that before. Wow. Wow. Thank you. Thank you for making this clear because I repeated that several times. Love is not emotion. Hear that clearly. Love is not emotion. But there is emotion in love. Not all emotion is love. Or all emotions are love. Now, what emotion then is love? The emotion that is love is the very one you have mentioned, is compassion. That's where compassion came in. Can you see the difference now? And what does compassion mean? I told you what compassion means in the same teaching. I said love is kind, the characteristics of love. Love is kind. Love is caring. And I said these two combines to define love is compassionate. So compassion is kindness, is caring. So that emotion that comes out of that care that you have for that person is compassion. That out of that mercy, you know, that is compassion. Yeah? So um, really good question uh, that you asked. I, I appreciate it indeed. So that's why I gave the example of Jesus Christ that in John chapter 11, verse 35, he wept. So that was emotion of love. Why did he weep? Because he had compassion on uh, Lazarus who died. So that was uh, the teaching around love. That's why I spend more time on that. I said we must come out because there are a lot of people who get confused with emotion and compassion 
uh, 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 emotion that is not love and emotion that is love, which is from compassion. So very good question, excellent question. I, I, I think uh, you, it, it helps to push that point again. I, I thought I was uh, uh, explaining it, but I hope this now clarifies. So love is not emotion, but there is, but love has emotion. <laughs> so love is not emotion, but there is emotion in love. Love has emotion, and that emotion in love is called compassion. And again, we can all check the meaning of compassion again. It is being kind towards another. It is being caring towards another. It is uh, showing a, a, a mercy towards another. So that emotion that we express from that is the emotion of love. Outside that, it is not love. Thank you for that question. A brother made the comment, it can really be challenging for a believer when he or she continues to show love but constantly get negative responses. It is really a test of a believer's love. Indeed, my brother. That's what we're going to be dealing with deeply because you have to understand the power of love to be able to handle this. That's why I made it clear that so you will understand that the response, love, active love, when you are active, the active love invokes a response, invoke and evokes a response. And that response has two parts. Some will be negative, hate indeed, to, to, to say it bluntly as it is. And the other side is it will invoke love, but it shouldn't stop us because what God wants us to do is to continue to invoke that love, the love of God. Praise the name of him. In the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I ask again of that over all these, your children and their families, these ones that have heard this word, this truth of love. I ask, Lord, that your spirit grace quicken them, quicken their entire family, that they will live in love and experience the power of your love. Lord, that you will move this, your children, to that higher hierarchy of life, to live in love, to be love as you have called us to be. You say, be thou perfect, Matthew chapter 5, verse 42 to 48. You say, be thou perfect for I, the Lord your God, I am perfect. We should be complete in you. Lord, I ask, make this your children complete in the name of Jesus. And Father, I pray now that whatever is the challenge in their life, by the power of your law today, let there be a turn around. Let there be a turn around. Let there be a turn around, oh God Almighty. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I speak over your life, brothers and sisters, by the Spirit of the Lord, that the power of God will move on your behalf. God will show himself mighty. Your Father who loves you in the name of Jesus, by his Spirit, will move over your matter. Your heart desires shall be established. You shall testify of the goodness of God this week, this month, this year, and all the days of your life. You and your entire household shall prosper by the love of God. Receive the greater victory in the name of Jesus. The Almighty God bless us all. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. We'll close it here.